Hi everybody, it's River here at Skylight Music Studios. Today we're bringing you a tutorial about octave shapes up and down the guitar neck. Uh, it's a bit of a standalone one this, it's a good exercise if you can uh, memorise it, if you can get fluent with it. It's good to team up with some other exercises that we'll cover on the channel, um, but we'll talk a little bit more about what you can do with it later. Uh, the point of the lesson really is just so that you can go from the nut up to the 12th fret and then obviously beyond, but the neck replicates itself after then, it's just a, an octave higher. Um, and the, the idea is just that you can go from, from the nut to the 12th and find every single note um, that you have chosen along, along the board. So I'm going to be using C for this lesson, but obviously if you pick a different note, um, I'll show you what you're doing in order to find every single one of the note that you've picked uh, when you're playing through with the exercise. So there are five patterns, um, five shapes. If you play all of the shapes consecutively, um, you will be able to find all of the notes. It's, it really is as simple as that. Um, if you learn the shapes, then you, you're well on your way to being able to learn the fretboard. Um, so we're going to begin uh, with C, that's, that's the one I've picked. Um, so I'm going to be beginning with the first C that we find on the fretboard, uh, in standard tuning at the very least, and that's on the first fret of the B string, or first fret of the second string. Um, so that's where I'm going to be beginning, but these shapes work in a sort of loop fashion. So um, if you want to pick a different note, you'll find it on a different string of course, uh, you just use the shape that's relevant for the string that you're on and then follow uh, follow it round and, and uh, use use the same sort of order, just start in a different place and, and you'll find all of those notes. But um, a little bit more explanation later. For now, I'll uh, show you these shapes, show you them through playing C um, and, and then we'll, we'll break all of them down. Okay, so here's what you're going for. This is the end result. Uh, playing chords of C. So there's one there, one there. Third one's a little bit weird because uh, the E shapes, E string, sorry, uh, are obviously replicas, so you find, find two Cs there, uh, both the same. Same thing again there, starting with both of the Cs. And then to finish, got that shape there. Okay, so those are the five shapes that we're going to be learning, what we're doing. Um, start back at the beginning, seems a good place to begin. So we've got our first finger on the first fret of the B string. Now these aren't scales, so uh, it's a bit wrong to call these root notes, um, on, only because of the fact that we're not really playing a key of anything, we're just fingering them in this way, rather than using a different set of fingers. Um, so if you're choosing to fret it in this particular fashion, um, use the standard playing convention of one finger per fret. Uh, so I'm going to be beginning with my first finger on the first fret of the B string, which means that my second finger would take the second fret, third taking third fret, fourth taking fourth, and the chord that I'm looking for, the, the octave of C that I'm looking for, is the third fret of the A string. So I'm going to hit that with my third finger, and that gives us the first shape. Now all we've done there is move two frets up and three strings down. Okay, so we've gone from the first fret to the third and from the second string to the fifth. So that's shape number one. Then we're going to move up and put our first finger on the note that we've only just found. So my first finger is now on the uh, third fret of the fifth string, third fret of the A string. And the next shape is two frets up and two strings up, found there. Okay, so I'm playing that with my third finger on the 5th fret of the 3rd string, the G string. And then the next one, that was pattern 2. Pattern 3, moving up again, 1st finger on the 5th fret of the G string. And this is where we find the C next on the E strings. So there are two shapes here. Um, you don't have to play these all at the same time because this is an exercise uh, more for your mind than for your actual playing ability. This is just so that you know where all of the notes that you're looking for are. Um, however, we'll just have a look, there we go, you, you can stretch it, it's possible to do, it's a little bit awkward, you wouldn't play like it, but um, it's definitely possible to do, and for that reason I would actually fret this using my third finger on the low E string while holding that fifth fret of the G with my first, just because apart from anything else it's good for your hands to practice that stretch, but it does mean that you can have the option at least of playing all three together 
but if not, it doesn't matter too much. In any case, you're fretting the eighth fret of either E string along with that fifth fret of the G, and that gives you the two octave shapes. Okay, so that was pattern three, shape number three. Number four, if you begin on the low E string, first finger again, you're gonna be playing the 10th fret of the D with your third finger. And that's the same shape that we saw before, that's two frets up, two strings up. Uh, alternatively, uh, keep your third finger where it is and play the high E string. And that gives you that one there. Okay, so both of those count as shape number four, just simply because both of them start on the, the C that's found on the 10th, or on the eighth fret, sorry, of the E strings. Um, pattern number five then, shape number five, the last one, brings us back to where we began, but an octave higher. So we're playing our first finger on the 10th fret of the D, and our fourth finger is covering the 13th fret of the B string. Okay, so it's just the 12 octaves, 12 uh, frets higher, sorry, one octave higher than where we began on the first fret of the B string. So those are your five shapes. So I'll just run through those uh, quickly one more time. So we've got shape number one, shape number two, shapes three, shapes four, and shape five. Okay, so those are the ones you're looking for. Now, if you're starting somewhere other than C, this is what I was meaning about going through and just starting at a different point in, in the sort of loop, uh, as it were, of shapes. Um, let's begin on the first fret of the A. Uh, when I'm starting on the A string, that's my octave shape. You can get it if you're, when we started here, uh, you can see it's that one there. So we're starting on the A string again, so we're using shape number two. Um, if we start down here, you could call it shape number one if you want. It depends on how you want to think about it. In any case, you're moving two strings up and uh, two frets up from your note on the A string. The next one is going to be three frets up onto the E strings, um, just as it was back when we played from there three frets up and found the C's on the E strings. We're now finding the A sharps or the B flats. Okay, uh, number four after that, you've probably guessed where we're going with this, uh, exactly the same as shape number four, but you've got the beginning notes from the, uh, the sixth frets this time because we've started first fret of the A. So starting on the sixth fret for shape number four, then shape number five, coming in here, so we've got our first fret on the, uh, sorry, our first finger is on the eighth fret of the D string, and our fourth finger is on the eleventh fret of the B string. Okay, so that's finding the B flats, and then looping back around to the beginning, um, oops, sorry, that one there, and we've moved two frets up and three strings down, which was our original shape number one that we played last time, we're now playing it as sort of shape, or fifth in the sequence, we're playing it as the fifth shape in the sequence. But that's how you would use it. So um, remember the shapes, remember them in order. You've got, uh, you've got the breakdown beforehand, um, so get fluent with them. And the idea really is to mix them along with your scale knowledge and your note knowledge of the fretboard. And what happens is, if you're quite good at knowing where all the G's are, for example, um, there's one on the third fret of the E. If you know how to find the octave nice and easily, there, you can start getting a bit more interesting uh, with your scales. You can start beginning to choose where you want to begin and finish them, uh, and sometimes you'll begin and finish them in different places. It just helps you think outside the box. But in any case, it's really quite essential essential knowledge for quick movement around the fretboard, knowing where your octaves are, and it actually is really good for getting you out of a bit of a stick sometimes as well. If you've uh, done a solo and it's not quite gone the way you want it, if you hit a, uh, a flat note, for example, you can get yourself out of it again quite quickly by finding the closest octave to the root or the key that you're uh, starting in and sort of bring it back as quickly as you can, uh, rather than having to sort of reverse your steps and go back to your sort of beginning point. So it's a useful skill to have, mix it up with your uh, scale knowledge and your note knowledge, and uh, you can start gaining some real fluency over the fretboard. 
Uh, but we're going to leave it there for today. If you've got any questions about those octave shapes, just leave a comment in the uh, section below and one of us will get back to you as quickly as we can. Uh, we hope that's been really helpful um, and uh, hope you have fun with it. If you've got any difficulty, like I say, send in a question or, or send in a problem and, and we'll do our best to sort of sort you out. So until next time then guys, have a good week and uh, we'll catch you later. Bye from Skylark. Mm -hmm.